Welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions. <laughs> As you can maybe see from the vibe and the outfit that I put on, although I'm going to need to figure out the lighting, today I want to do not even a spooky readathon. I just like to do a readathon, frankly, because. Or maybe we can talk about the books that I've been reading. I just really, really, really like vlogs in October. Maybe I could pick up the Penny Dreadfuls again and read one of the stories. I really liked last time how I read the Edgar Allan Poe stories, but point being, I just really want to sort of have a conversation about the stuff I'm reading because I am currently done with the Bungo novels and I am watching the anime, so <laughs> that that reading is not going to disturb my other reading anymore. And Let's discuss the stuff that October will be bringing us reading-wise, because I am feeling chatty. Full transparency, I was going to put on lipstick, but since I made myself like a hazelnut coffee, I really, really don't, don't like having lipstick while I'm drinking or eating something. But when I'm done, I will put on lipstick, because I never wear a lipstick in real life, and I thought it would be kind of fun to do so for a video. Now... What we are going to be reading is going to obviously depend greatly on what I feel in the mood for. However, we're going to try out something from this collection. I've been using this collection like for my October reading probably for years now because I've gotten a lot of use out of this. This is actually like the, what is the edition? I don't know what the edition is. I think it's American manufactured in the United States. Fall River Press. Okay, so it's that edition. I also have King Arthur and his knights in this edition. It was really worth the money. I think it was maybe like 13, maybe 14 euros at the time. Really, really worth the price because it's a very nice hardcover. It's a nicely curated collection. And I've been just getting the heck out of it for the last few years. So what we're going to be reading I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to have to remind myself which stories I actually read and which I haven't, and then I'm going to tell you. But it's just a fun thing to do every October. I'm not going to lie, and it's very simple to like put in this video. We're going to be continuing on with Gormenghast. Now, I would like to actually talk about this book for a little bit because I've read 150 to 200 pages, I think, somewhere in between. And I really, really want to discuss it. So if you have read Gormenghast, um, stick around. I'm going to need I'm going to need your opinion. The last thing we're going to be continuing on is obviously Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. That is not a read, really. I just picked that up whenever I feel like it. And the one thing that I bought this year is my favorite Agatha Christie. Now, my favorite Agatha Christie, and I mean in terms of adaptations, because I've been watching Agatha Christie all my life instead of reading. I my favorites are Orient Express. Halloween party, and I think there's another one that I'm forgetting right now, but there's like three episodes that I love to watch yearly. Poros Christmas, I also pretty much like, but I bought Halloween party this year because I saw on Facebook that this girl was selling it for like a really, really cheap price. And like it's the perfect cover, the perfect edition, and it is one of my favorites. Like I think I watch Halloween party pretty much every year. So I do know everything that happens in this. But I've never read a Poirot book before, so I think it could be interesting to see if they translated, well, <laughs> Poirot from the book to Poirot from the show. So this is such a perfect thing to read. I don't think I'm going to read it now. Obviously, I think I'm going to read it closer to actual Halloween. But I just wanted to show off the edition because it's genuinely so pretty. So those are the four things that I'm going to be reading. Now, if I end up picking up another book. I will tell you, but I'm going to try and not to because let me know if anyone else actually feels this way. But when I have too many things to read, it's almost like I'm in a slump. Like it's similar to being in a slump because I have like 30 things that I want to read and I end up reading none of them. So it almost feels like I'm reading nothing because I'm in a slump. So this is what happens this time of year. I get so excited to read all the things and then I end up reading nothing. But let's get started. I'm going to tell you what I pick up first and it's probably going to be one of the Penny Dreadfuls. We have finished the two stories from the Penny Dreadfuls. Now, the books that I, the stories that I read were 
In Kropsburg Keep by Ralph Adams Kram, Kram? I mean, he's German, so... <laughs> And also Lost in a Pyramid or The Mummy's Curd by, Z by Curse by Louisa May Alcott. <sighs> the thing that I have to say about this is Louisa May Alcott's story was for some reason extremely misogynistic. <laughs> it's like she's a woman, so I am a little bit confused as to why, why that is. But obviously, historically, it's not that weird for women to be misogynistic about other women, especially like in her time. I haven't read Little Women, nor do I really want to. I never really liked that story that much. Like, I didn't like the new adaptation. I enjoyed the 90s adaptation, but I didn't like the story that much. So I, don't, I just don't really like Louisa May Alcott. I give that story three stars. The other story, though, the German one, Kropsburg Keep, I really, really enjoyed. Like, the atmosphere was perfect. The words he used, or rather the translation, because it's probably, it was probably in German originally, the words used, really, really good, really atmospheric. I loved it. And how the whole castle was described, it sort of reminded me of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, so I wonder if she actually read this short story. But... The ending was excellent. The length was perfect. Like, I felt like it shouldn't have been any longer than it actually was. Like, it was perfectly paced. And I highly recommend it. I also checked which stories I haven't actually read yet. And if you have the collection, like, you maybe <laughs> can check alongside me. Now, the stories that I haven't read are The Dream Woman by Wilkie Collins. There's no particular reason why I haven't read that. A Night in the Grave or The Devil's Receipt, which it says here by Anonymous, but when I checked on Goodreads, it said it's by Walter Scott. And you can sort of tell because it immediately has a really, really hard to read. I don't mean it as an insult, just really hard to read Scottish writing style where I feel like I'd have to say everything aloud to be able to understand it. I also didn't read, apparently, The Case of Lady Sanex, which is by Doyle. I didn't read The Apparition of Lord Tyrone Lady Beresford, also by Anonymous. It just seemed really boring to me, I'm not going to lie to you. And I also didn't read The Executioner by William Goodwin. I also didn't read The String of Pearls or Sweeney Todd the Demon Barber by James Malcolm Reimer because it's the only story I think aside from Frankenstein that's like 250 pages. And I'm not reading it because for reference, these pages very packed with words, like the margins are very, very small, and the font is very small, so 250 pages in this book means like 500 probably in real life. Now, I like this idea that like every year I read two or three stories, but so far they've been sort of half and half. I've liked some, I've really not liked some others. Now, I'm thinking like if I were to read like one more for this October, which one it would be? Because Executioner is also really, really long. The Apparition of Lord Tyrone to Lady Beresford, I said, just seems very, very boring. Even though it's just six pages, I don't really feel like reading Arthur Conan Doyle at the minute. I can't read Walter Scott at the moment. I don't have the brain power. And I don't know if I want to read Wilkie Collins. So, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I will read Lord Tyrone to Lady Beresford and tell you what I think. But... <laughs> It just doesn't seem very interesting to me. I'm sorry, I'm just flipping through it. <laughs> there we are. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. I also picked up my Edgar Allan Poe just to see if there's anything I can read in there, but... Why does every single video that I plan to make like this, that I want to be themed, just turn out to be me reading short stories when we've all established that I don't like short stories. I don't know why I do that. So my thinking is I'm either going to read another short story or I'm going to read a little bit of Edgar Allan Poe. And then unlike the last video, the rest of this video is going to be me reading books that I'm actually interested in because making a thematic video where I enjoy nothing I read is a little bit dull.
let's just let's just talk. Let's talk about how things stand. We're back to that hideous October weather where I live, where I'm wearing shorts again. Yeah, I put on this long sleeve thing literally just for the video. But it is not, you know, just 30 degrees shorts weather like last year. It is <laughs> shorts in the afternoon, but then at some point I just get super cold. So I need to put on my winter sweatpants and it's <laughs> unbearably irritating. It's unbearably irritating. During the day, essentially, you're on the verge of dying from heat stroke unless you dress borderline summery. And then in the evening, it's blanket, long sleeves. You're going to freeze to death. So in order to cope... With the absolute <laughs> horror of that let's just talk about books briefly now rebecca finally arrived <laughs> rebecca finally arrived in the mail it's a very pretty copy it looks new even though i bought it used and i did start it to preface this i don't like her writing style i really don't like daphne du maurier's writing style it's extremely dull and i can't even put a finger on why and we're gonna get to that in a minute but I feel like everything she describes, she describes in so much detail, but for some reason, I find it boring detail. Like, I read her short, st short story in the Penguin Modern Classics Little Edition this year. I was bored to tears. Like, I barely finished that. But why did I buy, actually, Rebecca? Because I liked the series, because I really, 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 really liked the series, the one from 1979 that I could barely find. I only found it on the Internet Archive, and I'm so happy I did. I loved it. I loved it to bits, and I was on the edge of my seat. So I kind of wanted to like fill in some blanks with the book, and I wanted to check if they did the adaptation well but it's a slog to get through okay it's a long book it's a 450 page book and i hate the writing style like i just read the first three chapters and i immediately started skimming which is not a good thing it's not a good thing i just found it incredibly boring to get through so while i will not maybe read it necessarily i will still be speaking about it because i want to compare it to the show but what i actually wanted to compare it to and that's why i said we'll get to that in a minute gormenghast i am going to finish book one pretty soon because i love it okay <laughs> i genuinely love it the first book doesn't even have titus as a character because he's still a baby i love this book unlike rebecca he also has a writing style that you can you can if you want to call it like he just overly descriptive like he describes everything but unlike rebecca for some reason i love it here like every time he goes on a little tangent to describe something like I i'm sat i'm like okay take it slow you're going to read the words you're going to read this paragraph because it's beautiful descriptions I, for some reason this suits me they're both british so it's not like you know american writing or british writing they're both british authors I love what he is doing when he's describing it. Like, there's this one character who I was like, I do not give a crap about you, like, you're irrelevant. But then I saw what I was missing as I was skimming, and I started again, and I started reading it slowly, and I was like, oh, <laughs> this is probably the prettiest chapter I've read so far in this entire book, description wise. And I had to go back and read it. Turns out there's no relevant character in this book because even if you don't really care about the person, you are missing out on some lore and on some vital, beautiful description. So yes, I want to finish the first book in this trilogy, hopefully soon, and I will give you my thoughts because I'm actually in love with it. Like I went from being very skeptical because, again, in the beginning I wasn't sure how much of it he was believing himself and how much of it he was putting into the characters. And now that I have a clear picture of that, I am hooked. I am entertained. I am genuinely interested to see where he's going with it. Like, I'm in love with it. I did not think I would be in love with Gormenghast, even though I kind of hoped I would be because it sounded like something I could like. But maybe it will give me what Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell didn't give me because I wanted a boring book that wasn't boring to me <laughs> to sink my teeth into to just dive into to like enjoy every lush description for all that it's worth i really 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 wanted that 
And Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell just enraged me. So maybe I will get that with Gorman Guest. But first, far more importantly, let's get to writing. I am currently writing just as far as an update goes. Book three of my high fantasy series. The thing that I have to say is I have people who are supposed to read book one and they're not and <laughs> they're not doing it. But I do need that second opinion. I can't just edit it myself and say, yeah, it's good to go and send it off to query because I do need that second opinion on certain things, on character development, on whether I did something right or not. So I straight up wrote just books two and three, like this year when I was in university uh, in my last semester of my undergrad. I was an absolute mess, just so we're clear. Like that last semester and the thesis absolutely killed me and I hated it. I, it, it was the worst. It was the worst experience I've had with school since high school. And I wrote book two. <laughs> I wrote book two in, during that last semester. I wrote the last 70,000 words in like a month. I was constantly writing like day or night. I remember I'd sit from like 11 to six in the morning, just writing. Like it was literally just, and I love book two, just so we're clear. It's so far my favorite in the series. Like I, as far as like, I nailed everything I wanted to nail exactly when I wanted to nail it. And so far it's by far my favorite and I wouldn't change anything about it. Like it's perfectly built, obviously. I do still need a second opinion on it, all of the books, but I, I nailed, I'm really happy with book two. Okay, I loved it so much that I myself read it several times. Book three though, really difficult. Like my book, my series is not a trilogy, so like it's not the last book, but it's the last book in terms of some stuff happening that needs to happen before the time jump. And it's, it's extremely difficult, I'm not going to lie. It's one of those like, yes, I did it to myself, but this needs to happen. Like it needs to happen and I need to do it, but it is really difficult to get right because there's several things that are really subtle that need to happen with several characters. And I'm like, I'm not really subtle because I know I need to do it, if that makes sense. Like, because I know it needs to happen, I'm laying hints, but they're no longer hints. They're like really, really not subtle. So I don't know. I'm struggling with book three and it's going a lot slower. But again, that's because I was writing my thesis for half the summer <laughs> and studying for the other half of the summer. So I wasn't really in the mood at looking at a Word document ever again. Like it's been a couple weeks since I finished my thesis and only now can I actually get back into it and I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. I'm at part two of the third book. One of the character point of views that I'd really love to write is back, but it's difficult. It's difficult. The stuff that I need to do, I need to do right. So I'm taking it really slow and I'm trying to plan it out as I go along. So this is a random writing update in the middle of a reading update. I don't know. I feel like I'm making vlogs because I am not really making like thematic specific videos, but I will try. Maybe I will make it like, I don't know, finishing the Gourmet trilogy video or a review of a book that I read recently, like just a review video. I don't know. I don't know. It's difficult to make specific videos when nothing in your life is <laughs> specific. The weather is a mess. I'm currently like in limbo like because I'm enrolling into my graduate program and I just graduated my undergraduate program. So I'm not university, but I kind of am. I'm resting, but I'm kind of not. I am still recovering from writing my thesis, but I'm supposed to be resting because I have university again in November. It's a lot of limbo and I don't like it. I don't like uncertainty. I'm an INTJ, so we'll see what this video turns out to be. Good afternoon. <laughs> it is in fact the other day and I'm wearing the same thing because that's just the lightest thing that I have in my house to, to be wearing because the sleeves aren't completely long. Anyway, side note, what I wanted to talk about today is more writing. So like if you do not do not care about writing at all, maybe don't watch maybe don't watch this video but if anyone is a writer it's really 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 difficult like i feel like it's more difficult to write within an outline than without one like obviously yes because you have stuff you need to do and without an outline you just like do whatever you want but pacing is a pain in the ass when 
you know what needs to happen. So just for reference, I'm at like, let's say 45,000 words into book three. Several things have not yet happened. And I'm not sure when they should happen. Like usually I have this sense where I'm like, okay, so this definitely will happen in the next chapter. And then I do it and often it fits. But other times I'm like, okay, how much filler do I do? <laughs> like to be fair, nothing is filler. Everything advances the plot in some way. But also I'm like, am I making too much of one point of view? But if I do introduce another point of view, it needs to be useful. It can't be just another point of view for the sake of having another point of view. I don't know what I'm even yapping about. My point is that I haven't found book one difficult, even with the edits. And yeah, fixing the beginning was difficult, but it was fun for me. It was great getting it to a place that I'm happy with. So even the edits weren't difficult. Book two, as I said, I breezed through. Like it was so easy to write. Everything happened exactly when I wanted it to happen. Book two is like the love of my life. Book three though, because so many things are sort of coming to a head and several developments need to wrap up. It's difficult, okay? And also these two characters, I mean, there's many main characters, but the two main characters currently, they have a great relationship. And in order for something to happen, I need that relationship to be a little bit strained, like not, not bad but a little bit strained because of what's happening around them. And that's just difficult for me to write because they have such a lovely relationship and they're in such a beautiful place that I physically can't make myself, you know, make them neglect each other or ignore each other when it's very obvious the other is in pain. I don't know. I don't know. I love writing to bits, okay? I love writing to bits and that is all that I want to do for the rest of my life, but it's difficult. Even when you know what to do, it's difficult because you either feel that it's not the right time to write it or you don't feel like writing it, even though you know that it has to happen. And yeah, for reference, I do write chronologically. Some people like writing out of order. Like for my other book, the first book that I'm not going to publish first, I definitely didn't write chronologically. Like I had an entire document where I wrote random scenes, but I feel like that's difficult. That's difficult to put together later. Pacing is also a mess because you have no idea what happens when. But with this book, I wrote all three chronologically. Like if I didn't feel like writing something that day, I would just leave it like for the next day. But overall, I wrote chronologically. And that really helps you see like when something needs to happen when something needs to happen, like it helps you build up the skeleton where you're like, okay, they are in spot a they're supposed to be in spot b and how you get them there like all this stuff is relevant you know like when you're writing chronologically you can see exactly how it's unfolding and if something happened too quickly if something happened at the end of the book that was supposed to happen in the middle beginnings are very difficult beginnings are very difficult i think part one of each of my books <laughs> is not a mess but definitely the most difficult to put together but yeah, I do write chronologically. Maybe that's what's giving me problems. Like I want to write the end of the book, like with this specific battle, with this specific thing that happens, but I, I have to get to that. <laughs> I have to get to that. The middle part is less difficult than the beginning for me, but also not as fun. <laughs> not as fun. So yeah, this is more of a writing update, honestly, than it is a reading update, but it is what it is. Okay. I just want to make as many videos as I can while I still can. We will have to be brief because my phone is pretty empty. But the thing that I actually just wanted to talk about, like very briefly, I don't know if I'm going to end the video here or not, is two updates. <laughs> Rebecca, I read the first, like, what, 70 pages, which is essentially the first episode of the mini series. It is scary accurate, okay? Like, I was certain it was because, sort of like, the Sherlock Holmes adaptation from the 80s and 90s, also with <laughs> Jeremy Brett, it's word for word. Like maybe like some things happen in other places because they change locations a little bit more. So like, for example, if they have a conversation in the car, they could have a conversation somewhere else. But it's word for word. Like I got through these 70 pages skimming the descriptions. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, <laughs> Daphne du Maurier really bores me when she describes things. 
but the dialogue and several like expressions that especially Maxim does word for word. Okay. Like that first episode was everything that happens in those 70 pages, like literally book to screen. The thing that worries me a little bit, I will say is the fact that there's like 400 pages left, maybe a bit less, like 380. And I think the series only had four more episodes. I'm not sure, but in any case, I feel like the book is way longer than the series which suggests, which is why when I saw it, I was pretty surprised. I thought it was like a, what, a 250-page, 300-page max book, but it's almost 450 pages. So we'll see how, how that plays out, because they're already at Manderley. Like, where I left off, they're already coming to Manderley. Is the entire book from now on just going to be her being haunted by Rebecca at Manderley? Because, I mean, I, again, I understand the series is about that as well. But that's a long, long time. <laughs> that's a long time. We'll see if I make it through. But the other thing that I wanted to say, I finally started <laughs> Hangs a Man because it got, got here in the mail last week. Shirley Jackson, love of my life. Okay, first of all, I can get into her. She's like the exact opposite of Daphne du Maurier. I feel like they were not necessarily popular in the same time, but they're both, you know, like more modern classics, like classics writers of the last century. Shirley Jackson, the exact opposite of Daphne du Maurier. I can get into her so easily. Like it took me a week to get through Rebecca with a skimming. I read like a hundred pages of this just last night. Okay. Because I can very, very easily read anything that she writes. I've not struggled with anything she's written thus far. There is one thing though that's spoiler or not spoiler. I don't really know, but there was like sexual assault in this and I wasn't entirely sure that that's what had happened because she doesn't explicitly tell you. Like I wanted to check and it actually was that. So, I mean, there's a warning for you. It's a little bit more dark than I anticipated, honestly. But Shirley Jackson is Shirley Jackson. She's the queen. I will read anything that she writes. In the meantime, I'm going to wait for my tea to steep, and then I'm going to enjoy myself. I just finished this week's episode of Not Some Book of Friends, and I'm immediately in a good mood. I am immediately in a good mood. Let's just wrap up the video very quickly, because in all honesty, I am not, not feeling the greatest today. But... Hangs a man. Shirley Jackson. It is complete. I'm not going to go into detail because the thing with Shirley Jackson that I feel is the most significant, the most built, well built, potent, plotted perfectly, is the suspense. Now, I don't know if this is a complaint or you should just get used to her style being this way, but don't really expect, like, a finale from her because there's always, like, build up and there's always an explosion within the plot but you're never going to get an ending where you think okay yes that was very perfectly rounded off because she's not going to give you that you're either going to have to interpret it yourself or it's going to be intentionally open-ended no that's something that i generally dislike but for some reason she is such a compulsively good writer <laughs> that i don't mind every time like it happened here as well there were several threads that I thought, okay, she needs to resolve that, or that probably needs to happen, or she needs to address this, this, and this, and she never does. But I somehow never mind, because her character writing, the subtle little things that she implies that you need to interpret for yourself, the description, just the overwhelming sense of dread within the plot that you can't even, like, point a finger to because she's not going to all of a sudden say, now things are escalating because they've been escalating all along. This is the third book, technically, third book that I've read by her because this is the third novel that I've read by her and I've read the entire short story collection also this year. And there's something addicting about her writing for me. Like, I couldn't put it down. This actually has three chapters. Like, it's a t over 200 page novel, but it has three chapters. So there's no little breaks <laughs> like for you to take while you're reading it. And I compulsively kept reading, kept reading, kept interpreting stuff my own way and then checking if I was right online for this one specific thing that I think I said earlier in the video. I wanted to know if it was actually <laughs> sexual assault or not. And 
just this entire thing, okay? Stressful, unsettling several times. I was like, okay, where is she going with this? What's going on here? Especially that last chapter where everything, like, where shit hits the fan. You need to reread several paragraphs and be like, I, I, I don't think I processed this correctly. Now, in terms of atmosphere, this is not my favorite. I think this is actually my least favorite. But when I remember that I gave Hill House four stars, I think upon reflection, I would give Hill House higher than I would give this. Simply for the atmosphere. Like, I loved the atmosphere and setting of Hill House. We Have Always Lived in the Castle is still objectively my favorite. And I haven't, I don't think I've rated the short stories because again, I don't rate short stories in nonfiction, but I loved it. I can't say I'm ever going to give one of her books under four stars unless she does something I particularly hate, but I want to read everything else she's written now. And I've added stuff to my wish list on Amazon because she's just excellent. I have nothing else to say. This was excellent. It's also not necessarily dark academia but it is leaning into it a little bit because of the main character changing as a person and <laughs> being very particular i mean i'm not even <laughs> trying to hide stuff but it says on the back that like her identity crumbles and nightmarish parties and stuff so basically her mind is changing her perceptive her perspective on things is changing so while not dark academia, it could almost be classed as something very adjacent to that genre because the majority of this takes place in university. And it is very dark. It is very, very dark. Surprisingly enough, considering that Hill House and We Have Always Lived in the Castle are deemed kind of like dark nightmare stories, this was dark. Just in a very realistic way. Very realistic way. I don't know what else to say. I want to read all her other books, and I probably will, just like I said, but not right now. As much as I love Shirley Jackson, I do feel that I need sometimes a little bit of a break from her because there's just something about... I got interrupted by myself. <laughs> there's something about her books that just keeps me engaged, okay? In comparison, again, to Daffy du Maurier, who I've also been mentioning heavily in this vlog, I just love Shirley Jackson's writing, unlike Daphne's, even though they both technically have really similar genres. Like Daphne maybe leans more into like actual thrillers than Shirley Jackson, who just writes like dread <laughs> and unpleasantness. But I love, I love Shirley Jackson. I really, really do. And I think she is slowly becoming one of my favorite authors. So I can't wait to read more by her. And this vlog, I won't say it was a mess. <laughs> I won't say it was a mess because at least unlike the short stories, I read stuff that I loved and genuinely found enjoyable. So I hope that you, I don't know, got, got a recommendation. And I saw that not a lot of people actually read Hangs a Man on Goodreads. So maybe pick it up. <laughs> if it's a Shirley Jackson you've never heard of, pick it up because it's excellent. And you are, I, you are probably going to, if not enjoy it, at least be a little bit unsettled. So that's it for me. I will see you in the next video.
I wanted to very briefly just wrap up this video with a few things that I read. I started a fire endless, but the problem with this that I've realized is I so did not care about the first book. <laughs> like I said this before, but I'm one of those people who like if something is I don't know, under five stars or under four stars, like a very high four. I, I actually generally didn't care about it. Like, this is what I've said before. I've actually cared more about some books that were like two or one stars because they made me feel something. They made me angry, more specifically, to earn that rating. But like three star and four star books, low four star books, didn't make me feel anything. So I couldn't necessarily say that they were bad, but they're so forgettable. <laughs> like, I read the first book and I enjoyed the Scottish descriptions and everything but i didn't care about a single character i didn't really care about what was going on like i couldn't care less after that entire book about who was gonna die who was gonna live couldn't care less i did buy this like immediately because i was like it's a duology you know finish it <laughs> but looking at it i do not care i do not care how it finishes i will read it because i bought it so i will read it and it's a thick book but i so don't care about what happens like i started it and i was like yeah i mean great descriptions I love it. Like, I love the, the Scottish Isle vibe, but I do not care about anything else. I do not care about where the characters are going to end up, like, not even a little bit. I also continued Letters from a Stoic. I think I've read about 100 pages now. Again, this isn't a book. Like, philosophy and nonfiction aren't books in my head. So, who knows when I'm going to finish this? This isn't, like, on my priority. I pick it up when I feel like it. But the thing that I wanted to talk about is Gormenghast. I've read the first book now, Titus Grown. <sighs> I just want to wrap it up because I'm not going to talk about it again, I think, until I've finished all three of these. Because again, like it's in one book, sort of like Lord of the Rings, like the three books make one whole. And I don't know anything about the first two books, but I know the third book is famously disliked. Every time I see anything about Gormenghast, which is rarely, it's people dissing the last book so now i'm genuinely very curious <laughs> but i finished the first book so good so so good it reminds me of dune in the way that not not in terms of plot but in terms of i thought i would be bored by it like everyone even the people that like it say like it's got a slow very wordy writing style and i was like okay great i'm gonna be bored I was hooked, okay? Not immediately, because first I was like gathering like my footing in the world, what the people are like, what the world is like, what the author is like. At first you're like not really sure if they mean some things themselves or if it's just in the book. And while you're gathering your footing, you don't really know how you feel. 10 out of 10, okay? I gave the first book five stars. Loved it so much. <laughs> I loved it so much and the characters and how quirky it all is but also fun and how dark but not gory i was such a huge fan also the wordy descriptive writing style became my cup of tea like like dune where i could rationally see how someone could hate it and be extremely bored reading it that's how i felt with this I feel like if you tell me that this is too descriptive, you don't like how many words he use, uses, you don't like how he constantly describes everything, I'd feel like understandable. Technically, in most books, I'd agree with you, but I loved this. I loved this. I've never in my life liked him describing or anyone describing architecture as much as here. Anytime he describes Gormenghast, I'm sat, okay? How he describes the season, Gormenghast Mountain, the lake, the forest, the small little crags in the distance, like everything he chooses to describe, I'm a big fan of. A character that I was straight up skipping, I thought was irrelevant, became one of the better point of, points of view. There's now a single point of view that I hated in book one, and that point of view is gone by the end. That point of view is gone by the end, so... Let's be very happy with that. I love the ending. I love how it's the same character in the beginning and in the ending. I love how Titus isn't even a character, even though the book is named after him. I loved everything about this book. I mean, not everything, just so we're clear. Again, not everything. It took me a little while to get into it. 
But once I got into it, I got into it. Now, I'm not going to, I also heavily annotated it. <laughs> I used even like the clear sticky notes to write notes in the book, which backfired on me a little bit because one time I wrote a single letter outside of the clear sticky notes. So warning there. But I'm not going to read book two immediately because I wanted to read a fire endless. I was like, you're going to read a fire endless because if you start reading this, you're just not going to stop. So the next thing I'm going to read is a fire endless. And I want to finish some of the books that I haven't finished yet, like How to Train Your Dragon 2. I would really like to finish that and Iron Hand, but I don't know if I'll get to that now in, in October. I mean, we'll see. Again, November is, is my favorite reading month, so I'm kind of looking forward to November. But at the same time, I'm going to university in November, so we'll see. We're, we'll see. I'm just rambling at this point. The star of this video is absolutely Titus Grown because I loved that book to bits and I really want to keep reading. Every time I look at it, like it's, it used to be like a nuisance before I got into it. I was like, I don't like the vibe yet. I don't like the characters yet. Like the writing's a bit strange. I can't tell what kind of world this is. So every time I looked at it before, I was like, you know that feeling when a book is a chore at first where you're like, okay, just keep reading it, keep plodding along until you like it or not. And every time I looked at it, I was like, okay, I read one chapter today, I read one chapter. Like, it was a chore. But when it stopped being a chore and it started being a pleasure, <laughs> that's when a book is good. When I kept thinking about picking it up, when I sat down and just read, you know, like a hundred pages in one sweep, that's when you know a book has got you. <laughs> that's when you know that it's not a chore to like sit down and read a chapter of Gormangas. That's when you want to read. A chapter of Gorman Guest, and I was so happy about that. I was genuinely so happy. The same thing again happened to me with Dune. These books that obviously they're classics, <laughs> so people have liked them. But now in modern times, both Gorman Guest and Dune, even when I see them mentioned as like excellent books by like younger people, and we all appreciate the interruption. Anyway, um. What was I going to talk about? Yes. So even when it's talked about by young people or modern uh, audiences that love the book and that they're, they are classics for a reason. And the reason that I say modern audiences is because I feel like if you read these books when they came out or when the l field of literature was a lot more narrow and small and similar because old writing styles and modern writing styles are very different things. I feel like it was far easier, you know, to like boring books because that that's that's what you were given. So they weren't boring at the time. But now when everyone likes fast paced, quick twists and turns kind of books, this can very easily be boring. Both Dis and Dune, every time that I talk about them, I'm like, I can see how someone might hate, hate the writing style. Like I'm not even getting into the story. That's just a subjective feeling. But I can so see why someone could not get through, like, Mervyn Peake or Frank Herbert's writing style because they just have that slow, slow, descriptive, indulgent writing style where it's like, no one told this man to cut things. I mean, maybe they did. I don't know. But no one told this man to not describe this tower for the fifth time or while someone is walking exactly how their legs are like hitting the pavement and how their knees are clicking that kind of stuff but i loved it i loved it i just it depends on how it's written and i i don't know i would say that i love slow descriptive writing styles but then there are so many instances where that isn't true but he won me over. He won me over just like Frank Herbert won me over all those years ago. And I loved it. I just loved it. I am in a way a little bit scared that because the last book is bad, that that's going to like, you know, <laughs> destroy my enjoyment of the other two. Because again, this is like one edition. This feels like one book. They're not separate. I can't ignore the last book. But we will see. We will see. Apparently, this wasn't supposed to be the last book. He was just very ill, so he never finished it. But I hope there is at least some kind of ending because, I mean, I hope I hope there's some kind of ending because that's the one thing that I have to say that is my complaint on the first book. It felt very much like a prologue. Like, it's a 370-page introduction into what's going to be the main story. That's how it felt, like laying the groundwork introducing the characters and 
Titus Grown, who is going to be like the next Earl of Gormenghast and the next one to <laughs> move the plot along. It felt like this was supposed to be a lot longer of a series because you see how big of a chunk of the book this actually is? Like where my annotations stop. I think this is more than a third, which means that one of the other two books is a lot shorter than this. So this was the longest prologue, followed by two books that aren't that long, and the third one apparently isn't good, according to people. So I'm slightly concerned, but that said, we will see. We will see because that's not the next thing that I'm going to be reading, and I need to sit with it a little bit anyway. So this was chaos. I hope you enjoyed it. I did read some good books this time. So I'm always contrary to popular belief. I am always so, so happy <laughs> to talk about good books, good stories, good literature, excellent writing, and well-written characters. I'm so happy to talk about things that I love that I feel like people who stumble upon videos where I just complain a lot are just very unlucky. <laughs> just very unlucky because I can complain quite a bit and I do like being a hater but I do love talking about things that just hit right for me so I will see you in the next video if this is the second outro I do apologize that's just because you really wanted to talk about Gorman Gas. so goodbye <laughs>